So, what is this WebRTC thing about? The first thing to note here is that WebRTC provides browsers with the ability to communicate in real time. Communicate with who? With other browsers. How does WebRTC achieve that? By providing building blocks that you, as a developer, can use in your source code. These building blocks include network, audio, and video components that are commonly used in this kind of applications. So, in other words, WebRTC allows to build real-time communication applications for the browser. Now, how is WebRTC different from some popular social apps such as Skype or FaceTime? Well, the difference is that WebRTC provides those features without requiring users to install any additional plugin or software other than the browser. So, how does it work? Essentially, these components are implemented in the browser and can be accessed through JavaScript APIs. The WebRTC effort is being standardized on an API level at the W3C and at the protocol level at the IETF and is supported by Google, Mozilla, and Opera. So let's talk about these JavaScript APIs. The first one is Get User Media. Get User Media enables your application to access users' media devices. The user will see a prompt asking for permissions, and after granting them, the streams of such devices will be available to be used from the code. Here you see an example of how the Get User Media API is used in JavaScript code. The second API is RTC Peer Connections. Once we have users' local media streams, we create an RTC Peer Connection object in order to be able to send them. Connection is made peer-to-peer -peer using the SRTP protocol. This means that media goes straight to the other browser without any storage in the middle and also is encrypted in transit. This enables security by default. The last API is Data Channel. Audio and video are not the only content that the WebRTC is able to transmit. You can also send any kind of arbitrary data. The possibilities of this include online video games, chat, and any kind of application that requires the exchange of information in real time. So, why is WebRTC so important? The first reason is that it enables communication in the browser, and right now there is no other technology capable of doing such a thing, at least not without having to install any additional software or plugin. One thing to mention is that although in this training we are focusing on WebRTC on the browser, it's also a common thing to implement it on mobile native applications. However, we won't get into that yet, one step at a time. The second reason is that it takes into account some of the most common issues in today's networking picture, which are NAT and firewall traversals. We'll get deep into this in a minute. And the third reason is that most browsers already support it. Now, the next thing that we are going to talk about is how WebRTC works in the real world. When you're ready, move to the next lesson.